Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. Who is ready to worship God today? Who is ready to give him the praise and adoration? Yes, if we're ready, can we stand up for praise and worship? Amen. Dependable, dependable God. It doesn't matter what comes my way, you are still God. Intentional, intentional God. Everything, everything is working out for my good. Dependable God. Dependable, dependable God. It doesn't matter what comes my way, you are still God. Intentional God. Intentional, intentional God. Everything, everything is working out for my good. Dependable God. Dependable, dependable God. It doesn't matter.
love is undeserved. We don't deserve your love, Lord. But yet you give it to us, yet you pour it on us. Lord Father, just begin to worship him. If you know that you're not deserving of his love, if you know that he gives you his love anyway, just begin to worship him. Lord, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve your love, yet you pour it on us. Every day, Lord Father, we thank you. We thank you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Just begin to give him, continue to give it him your love. Your love, there is nothing like your love, Lord. There is nothing like your love. Your love is overwhelming, Lord. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. We have never experienced, nor will we ever experience anything like your love. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your love. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. I say we are blessed in the church. We are blessed. Hallelujah. God bless you, our choir, for the good job you are doing. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence today. I pray that as we go into your word, your spirit will lead us. Lord, and your word will come and bless your people. In the mighty name of Jesus. No one will remain the same as we came in here today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' name wonderful name I pray. Hallelujah! Are we alive today? Hallelujah! Somebody shout hallelujah! You know, let's show that the spirit of the Lord is in us. Let's shout hallelujah! You know, as we do this, the wall of Jericho is falling down. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, you can have your seat. We bless the Lord today for another opportunity. And I welcome everyone into the presence of the Lord today, whether you are a member of BICC or you are just visiting here. You are welcome to BICC today. And those who are joining us online, I say welcome to you as well. We bless the Lord because our God is a faithful God. He is faithful in all his ways. And we thank God because this month, you know, we have been looking at irresistible life of godly of godly influence. And, you know, last Sunday, if you have not listened to that message again, I'm not talking, whether you are here or you are not here, you need to listen again. That was very powerful from Okwe. That was, I mean, incredible. We bless the name of the Lord. Uh, and, uh, you know, that foundation has been laid and she has gone through you know, all the area that we can be influenced or we can influence people. So uh, whether in our personal, individual life, through our sibling, through our parents, through our, our peers, uh, uh, in university, in busy business partner, I mean, in marriage, in every area. Hallelujah. So, in other words, God has endowed us and blessed every one of us. Once we are born into this world, we become influential. Everyone. And whether people, I mean, gave their life to Jesus or not, they have influence. And that is why we need to understand godly influence. So I will, you know, from what has been said since the beginning of this month, even in, during the week we heard about uh, uh, the love, uh, uh, godly influence through love, that is, when we have the love of God in us, uh, we'll be able to influence others. So, I mean, all have been said. So, from there, I will start. And today, I want to look at the book of First Corinthians. You know, Corinth is a, you know, is a very popular city in Greece during the time of uh, the days of Apostle Paul. And that place, uh, according to the historian, is, uh, is a place that is uh, bustling with uh, commas, you know, degraded culture, uh, you know, uh, with idolatry and different kinds of things. But in the midst of all those things, 
Apostle Paul went there and uh, he planted a church. In order for the church to be the light in the midst of darkness. And uh, that church, I mean, in, 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 in fact, Apostle Paul, after, I mean, he wrote two letters to the church in Corinth. He wrote two letters to them. And they have many questions. I mean, if you study the book of uh, First and Second Corinthians, you will see that that church, they struggle with many things. And that is helping us today. To, to, to see what God is doing. So, in the midst of this, we see uh, how that church transformed their environment. And today, we are in a culture that needs us, even like the people, the church at Corinth. We are to influence the world that we are today. So I want to start from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 8. And I'm using New International Version today. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 5 to 6. Verses 5 to 6. And it says, For even... If there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us, turn to your neighbor and say, for us. For us. Tell your neighbor, for us. for us. There is but one God. Amen. There is but one God. There are many gods and many lords, but for us, there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came and for, for whom we live. And there is but and there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. So, when we are talking about godly influence, there must be a foundation for godly influence. Everybody in the world can influence, but those who are going to influence godly must have that foundation within them that is, God must live in them. And that is why the Bible says, I, I, Apostle Paul said, well, there are many gods. There are many things that can look like God, that can act like God, that, that can behave like God. There are people that can even act like God. When we are talking about things, like this. We are talking about uh, power. We are talking about uh, wealth. We are talking about uh, pride. We are talking about, uh, you know, many, many, many things. Fame can become God for, and people can influence in all these areas. But for us, but for us, Hallelujah. there is only one God. Amen. And that must settle in the life of every believer. Amen. Because Apostle Paul looked at the environment of his people at that time, and he, and he asked to tell them, this man is a man of God indeed. So, Success can be a God, wealth can be a God, and many things can be a God. The Bible tells us in the book of Colossians chapter 1, verses 17 to 18. He is before all things. Amen. This only one God is before 
all things. And in him, all things hold together. In him, everything consists in him. Whether you want to talk of power, you want to talk of fame, you want to talk of wealth, you want to talk of success, you want to, anything you want to talk and anything that people are seeking for in life, everything holds together. So this one God is the God that we are talking about. When we are talking about godly influence. Verse 31 of that uh, John chapter 3 says, The one who comes from above is above all. Is above all. Is above anything that you can think about. And the one who is from earth belongs to the earth. And speak as one from the earth. So you have to differentiate what you are listening to. What you are getting. Is he from God? Or the life on the feet of hell? If it's from God, he is going to work wonders in every area of our lives. And he said, so that in everything he might have, okay, I think I jumped that. He is, he is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead. So that he, in everything, he might have the supreme mercy. In everything. And when we talk about this God, he, he left his own throne. He came to this world. He died for me. He died for you. And uh, he went back. And before he went back, John said something about him. He said, he must become greater. He must become greater. John chapter 3, verse 30. I must become less. So I titled this message, Not Me, But God. Not me, but God. Whatever things that God is going to use you for, whatever things that God has used you for, whatever things that God is using you for right now, not you. But God. God in us, the hope of glory. So when we know that God is doing these amazing things in our life, we will know how to request for more of him. You know, it got to a stage in the life of Christians, we think that we have enough of God. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. So that we might not feel that... We, how can, you cannot, how can we have the fullness of him? God is bigger than what it, we can incubate. And that is why we believer, we need to open up to God and allow God to work wonders, to use us to reclaim the word for God. Amen. Because we are people of influence. Amen. Jesus came to this world to influence the world. And in his own time, in his own 33 years, he, 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 he turned his world around. The apostles took over. They turned their own world around. This is our own generation. We must turn this world around for God. In whatever things that we are doing, it is not us, but, oh, but God. We all have influence, and that influence is amazing. It's great. It's mighty. 
and the word that come from us, uh, the, the effect of what come from us uh, can affect people's life uh, and their eternity. And that is why every one of us, we must take hold of what we have and use it so that God uh, will take the center stage of everything that we are doing. Amen. That we will not appear to be something, but God will be seen. And when people see God, their life will never remain the same again. Amen. They can see me and still remain the same, but when they see God in me, they must not remain the same again. And that is why we must not appear to be God to people. We must appear as human, but with God inside of us. Amen. No matter how God is using us. So I define this uh, uh, influence as the power to lift our life and our daily life and all our endeavor to a new level of purpose and influence that turns everyday life into a dynamic mission. Power that lifts our life, our daily life, our endeavors to a new level of purpose and influence that turns everyday's life into a dynamic mission. That when we are just going on our own way, we are on a mission. When we are at work, we are on a mission. When we are in our family, we are on a mission. Amen. When we are traveling in the bus, we are on a mission. Amen. That every day of our life become a mission. And also, this mission is to see the world around us as God's placement. You know when people do a cause, uh, they, they, they have to go for placement. Uh, uh, we have to see the world around us as God's placement for every one of us. Because we think about me, I and myself too much. And if we are going to influence our world, we need to see the, God, the world around us as a placement where we can serve God with excellence and purpose, influencing people for Christ and expanding the kingdom of God every day. We have to be authentic. In whatever things that we are doing. In our character, we have to be authentic. We, in, in our work, we have to be authentic. Uh, we, we have to make everything to become purposeful. Then we can influence our world. Character is very, very important to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know our major statement is empowering people from every walk of life to become the best in all that God has called them to be, walking in faith and advancing into their God-given destiny. That should be our individual mission. I want to read, I mean, just talk about... Uh, the story that we know very well, that is the story of a Samaritan woman. In the book of John chapter 4, I, I just want to take something out from here before I round up this message. And that will give us a uh, Three very important things that can help us 
to build our influence. In John chapter 4, from verse 1, John chapter 4 from verse 1. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciple. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Fast forward. Now he had to go through Samaria. That is a very, very important statement in that place. Now he had to go to Samaria. Because of our time, when you get home, you can read it to verse 12. Why is it that Jesus had to go through Samaria? He is God himself. He can decide what he wants. He can do what he likes. But on this occasion, I mean, as a, as a Jewish man, you know, they don't, they don't pass through Samaria because Jew and uh, Samaria, they hate each other. They don't pass through Samaria. But the Bible tells us here, Jesus had to go through Amen. Samaria. And let me tell you, he had to go through because of someone that he, he had to influence. Amen. There is someone waiting. Amen. There is someone ready. Amen. There is someone that God has prepared. Amen. And in all our daily lives, God has prepared people that we can influence. Amen. But do you want to go through? You know, even sometimes when we are going through, what do we say? Why am I going through this? That is our question. But this is Jesus, our Lord and Savior. The Bible says he had to go through Samaria just because of that woman. There is someone that got connected to our life on a daily basis. That through them we have to go through. We must go through. Even though when Jesus met that woman, there are many things that that woman said. When Jesus said, give me water to drink, he said, why are you asking me with water? You Jews, you don't have anything. We don't have anything to do with you. We Samaria. This is someone they want to bless you. Insult upon injury. If you receive that, what will you do? Uh, this one doesn't need help. But Jesus was not angry. And Jesus went on and said, Woman, I have, you know, I will give you even the, 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 water, we, the water that we give you. We, we spring over you, we continue. Oh, yeah. The woman looked at him and said, You don't even have bucket. No glass of water. You don't have bucket. You know, people will look at you and say, what do you have? Because they don't know what is inside of you. They will want to render you useless. But you must know who you are. You must know what is inside of you. You must not subject to their opinion. So, what happened, Jesus, I mean, influenced her life, and she went out and influenced the life of others. You know, when we are going through, whether in our journey of life, in our business, in our education, in our uh, ministry, in uh, marriage, in everything. We must not waste it. There's something that God wants to do through that. I, I strongly believe in that. I always tell people, when people are going through something, I say, God is going to use that thing for something else. Amen. 
and I believe in it. But something happened to me. Recently, I went to U.S. I traveled to U.S. I've been going to U.S. now, I think it's 1998 or 99, I can't remember. And there wasn't a time that they stopped me at the border. There wasn't a time. Even when I was using Nigerian passport that I have to apply for visa and everything. I've traveled to New York State, uh, Washington, I mean, uh, Dallas, Texas. Uh, I've been to Hawaii. I've been to Los Angeles, uh, California many times. Not one time. But this time around, when I, when I got off the airplane, I mean, there was many, I mean, when I go to immigration, many, the, the, the numbers of people ahead of me, they were more than 2,000. So I quickly test Pastor Jetundi. Uh, <laughs> I don't know when I'm going to get out of this place. And he tells me back, he said, okay, we are outside. And we planned that thing to the extent that, you know, his daughter that is coming from Northern California, we come at the same time so that he can pick us together. So she has come. They were both together waiting because our own flight is like a local uh, flight. So I got there. We queue for, I mean, about one and a half hours. I finally got to the front of immigration officer. And he asked me to put my finger, I mean, to do with the uh, thumbprint and everything. And the computer stopped working. <laughs> and he said to me, you know what? My machine is no more working. You have to go back to the queue and go to another person. No, no, not going back, but to, st to stand in the front of the queue. So I stand in the front of the queue, and I went to uh, an another uh, officer. And he looked at me and said, he looked at my pastor and said, well, uh, why are you here? And I told him, I'm here for a funeral. He said, funeral? I said, yes. Is that why, why, why you are here? I said, yes. He said, tell me the truth. I said, ah, that is why I'm here. He said, I didn't trust you. Follow me. And he called me inside. And when I entered that room, I saw detention. I said, detention? Your pastor entered detention. <laughs> but... The first thing when I entered there was that the numbers of people inside that room. I said, so is this the way they... I've been coming and going and coming. I never knew that they even detained people at all. So I sat down. But there was a man there what, just shouting. What the, the, and the office, one of the officers came to him and said, we told you not to use your phone again, and you are still using your phone. We saw you on the camera. He said, yes, I have to call my wife and tell my wife that I'm still alive. You have kept me for more than three and a half hours. And the, and the officer said, I will take your phone. I, I will seize your phone. And he just threw that phone to the officer. And when I look at that, I went to him. I said, calm down, please. They are doing their job. They are doing their job. He looked at me. And he said, ah, we, 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 they detained us together. Why are you so calm like this? <laughs> so, you know, you know, he went to another chair that are empty and he slept on it. They took his phone from him. So about five minutes later, another lady came in. 
and she sat uh, one one chair in between me and her because they didn't allow people to they 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 are still doing the distancing yeah and that lady when I look at her she was so scared. If you see the way she was gasping, I wanted to talk. The Spirit of God didn't allow me. And later, she turned to me. She said, why are we here? Before I opened my mouth, she said, is it because this is the first time we came to U.S.? I, I said, I said, is this your first time of coming to U.S.? She said, yes. I said, calm down. I said, you know, this is not my first time. I've came to U.S. more than 50 times. And I'm still here. So don't worry. They are doing their job, and they are going to leave you. Even when, did you get your visa? He said, yes. Is he... Uh, uh, <laughs> she said, oh, no, no, everything is okay. I said, don't worry. And as I was talking to her, I can see her eyes glowing. And she smiled. And she... <sighs> so, from then, we were talking and she was smiling. That, and after five minutes, they called me. They called my name. And I told that I was going out. And I said, uh, I, did you come from British Airways from London? I said, yes. I said, OK, uh, your bag is outside that door. When you are going, you just take it. We put your bag there so that, uh, don't worry, CCTV is there. Nobody is going to take it. Later, they called me. and. They, they have four boots inside that detention that they are calling people. They called me and they said, uh, what did you say you came to do? I said, <laughs> I said, I said, Funira. I said uh, how long are you going to stay? I said, I'm staying four days. I said, OK, welcome back. Welcome to the United States. Stamp my passport and gave it to me. I said, you can go now. So I left. I didn't even think about anything. But when I was coming back inside the plane, the man that sat beside me started asking me different kinds of questions. And God so good, as he asked, I will answer, as he asked, as, and he said, who are you? How did you know all these things that you are talking about? I said, I'm a pastor. He said, no wonder. You people are different. There and then, Hallelujah. I now remember that lady. And I said, okay, because of that lady, God sent me to that place. And that man that was angry, he sent me there. God sent me to detention. <laughs> Just because of others. You know, we... We need to understand this life. You know, when I entered there, I now knew that ah, people are... So all the time, they have the distension for people. You know, when we are living our life free and everything is going on well, and we do not understand what other people are going through. But what I'm saying today is that whatever thing that you are going through today, it may be because of somebody. And don't waste it. Use it. So that we will become a great influencer. How do we build our influencer? I, I mean, I, mean I, I will not be able to go through everything. I will just tell you the three things. The first one is integrity. You know, don't sell your, I mean, decide not to trade your integrity for anything. Anything. 
Be a person of integrity. Number two, credibility. We are living in a world of <laughs> that lacks credibility. How many of you have received a message on social media and you sent it out to numbers of people and find out later that it was a lie? Yes. <laughs> I've done it. Because the word lack credibility. But we must be credible in everything that we do. And the third one is service. We need to serve. Serve the Lord. Serve others. And I want to encourage us. Every one of us as we have come to this place, and everyone that is hearing me online, we have two groups of people here. Those who have this God that we are talking about, and those who don't. If you have this God, praise God. Use the grace of God upon your life. When you wake up in the morning, know that there are people that are waiting for you. And God will connect them. It's now left to you, it's now left to me if we connect with them. The second group is those who does not know this God. If you are in that position, you need to know this God. It needs to become, it, it, this is no matter of coming to church. This is a personal matter that God will become personal to you. And when God becomes personal to you, all those other gods, little, little things that people are running after, they become nothing because you know that everything consists together in him. Everything is all together in him. Without him, nothing is exist. So today, I call you to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. The author and the finisher of our faith. The one who came to die for you and die for me. And when you give your life to him, you become a son and daughter of the Most High God. And then you can have this God inside of you. And from then, everything will change. You will begin to manifest the influence that God has put in you. And it will reflect. In fact, your influence will first be inside out. It's not going to be audible. Later, it, it will become audible. So when you give your life to Jesus today, your life will change forever. Amen. Say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you today for your word. I surrender my life to you today. I want you to be the Lord and the Savior of my life. From this day forward, take my life, Lord Jesus. Thank you. I accept you. And I know you have accepted me. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this privilege to listen to your word today. Father, we declare... Nothing, nothing is from us. Everything is from you. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we go through this life, oh God, Father, this amazing, wonderful influence that you have given to us, you will help us, Lord, to be salt and light in the world that we are, in the name of Jesus. And through us, the world will be turned around. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.